All right, good morning. It's a reading lesson seven. This is the second part to the SOS adventure team. And I totally forgot yesterday to do definitions. It looked different yesterday, so I didn't even see them. But today I'll do the definitions that we learned yesterday of the new study words. So the, we had six of them. And the first one is cutter. Cutter is a small ship used by the government. Cutter is a small ship. And the second one was ferry. Ferry is a boat that carries people and things across a body of water. Ferries are pretty big, they're pretty slow, and they just carry people and stuff along smaller, usually smaller parts of water. So like across like a river. Sometimes um, they go like from island to island. Yeah, I've been on several ferries that would go from like um, different islands or from, like I went on one once that was from like Manhattan, New York to like Staten Island. So it was from like a big part of land to like an island, right? And three, the third one is gauge. Gauge is an instrument that measures things like gasoline or air pressure. So you can usually have these in your car and you can see how much gas you have left in your car and that's a gauge. It shows you how much you have left. And the fourth one is locomotive. A locomotive is like um, an engine that pulls railroad cars. So it's like, yeah, it's the engine of pulling all the railroad cars, right? So locomotive. The fifth one is mufflers. Mufflers are like scarves worn around your neck. Keep you warm. And then the sixth one is splint, something stiff that is like tightly bound to a broken bone to keep it from moving. So a splint would be like, okay, if, you, if I break my finger, a splint would be like um, something stiff, so like wood, plastic, like a splint, and then it's like tight around my finger so it doesn't bend or break. So a splint just keeps it, it's like stiff, tight, and keeps it from bending so that it can heal, right? That is a splint. So those are your new study words. Um, I'm going to read um, three more sentences with automatopoeia words in them. So you can try to find the automatopoeia words. I will give you the answer, obviously, after I say it. All right, so the first one is, Joyce heard a tiny peep from the chicks inside the eggs. And the word there is peep, because peep sounds like the sound chicks make. The second one is pop. The kernels of popcorn jumped up and down in the kettle. And pop is the automatopoeia word because that sounds like what popcorn sounds like in a kettle, right? Pop. And then the third one is squeak, squeak, sang the wheel on the wheel, wheel barrow. So squeak is the automatopoeia word because that's the sound that the, the wheels made on the rusty wheelbarrow. Squeak, right? Sounds like what it means, automatopoeia words. So today you're going to read your story to your mom or an older sibling. And after you finish it, of course, make sure that you tell them what the problem in the story was and how it was solved. And your Bible verse for today um, you need to memorize it and say it to your mom. And then she'll put a check mark in it. Um, but the verse is, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. That's from Ecclesiastes 4, 9. So jobs are so much easier and way more pleasant to do when you have two people working on it and helping each other out. So everyone on the team needs to be willing to help each other out and listen to other people's ideas People who like brag or think that they need to come out on top all the time don't make good team players and people don't really enjoy working with them. So that's why it's important to um, be humble and serve on a team and um, find joy in helping and serving others. Um, yes, so there's a poem that we need to read on page 19. It is called White Fields. It's after the SOS Adventure Team. You need to make sure you read it, but I decided I will read it for you today. And the last stanza in this poem, you'll see it 
but is different because there's only one line on it, but it rhymes with the stanza before. So it's an interesting twist to a poem, but I will read it. It's called White Fields. In the winter time we go, walking in the fields of snow, where there is no grass at all, where the top of every wall, every fence and every tree is as white as white can be. Pointing out the way we came, every one of them the same, all across the fields there be prints and silver filigree. And our mothers always know, by the footprints in the snow, where it is the children go. By James Stevens. And filigree means, it's like, filigree is like a pattern of like, with like, with like small and complicated designs. So it says, all across the fields there be prints and silver filigree. So it's talking about the snow and seeing our footprints in the snow and how there's like patterns and yeah, because the snow is really amazing, right? So um, enjoy your reading lesson, have fun with it and have a good day.